Hello and welcome to season three of the LuxCast, where we explore the intersections of Christian faith, culture, and our lives. My name is Chuck DeGroat, professor at Western Theological Seminary. In this season, we are discussing faith and vocation. Today's guests are Josh Larson and Eric Kuyper. Josh is the editor of Think Christian, an online magazine dealing with issues of faith and culture, and co-host of the podcast Film Spotting. Eric is Chief Creative Officer of Celebration Cinema, founder of Into the Noise, and adjunct professor at Western Theological Seminary. Josh and Eric sat down to talk about Josh's new book, Movies Are Prayers, and have a conversation about the relationship of film and faith. Hey, Josh. Hey, Eric. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk with you about your new book, and uh, the title, Movies Are Prayers, is it's, it's a great title. It's interesting. So let's let's dive into that. In some ways, it expands both of those you know two key words, movies and prayer. So let's we'll start on the prayer end of things. How how do you see movies as our prayers? And it, I see it as an expansive thing. So yeah, for me, it came about from sitting through films and experiencing what I occasionally experienced mm -hmm. in prayer and okay. realizing, okay, this is interesting. This is a film that's lamenting in some way, and it's very much mirroring the prayers of lament that I've participated in in church. Mm -hmm. So prayers from Christian tradition, but also personally, sometimes movies, that's where they hit you, right? In the gut, and that's where good prayer comes from. Yeah. So I saw that parallel and thought, what if I start looking for these? Hmm. opportunities or these examples and seeing if it's maybe not this last film or a couple of films but it's something a little more consistent or pervasive in how hmm. movies can operate and sure enough you know once you start looking for something like that you yeah. see it right. more uh, and and yeah it, it became this project in a way I thought well how far can we take this what other forms of prayer I think lament came easily yearning came easily yeah and then i started thinking about other forms of, of christian prayer obedience confession what yeah. movies might might look like that a little bit and it, it proved to to be rich enough to explore book length form at least yeah so um how much do you think then so you're saying it, it is something you sort of like woke up to in some ways and then started looking for it so the impact of prayers function or movies functioning as prayers like how much how much is, do you see it as being connected to you needing to be aware of that going in you know what i'm saying like you right. said once you started looking for it you saw it more but the effect of a movie as a prayer do you need to be looking for it you think when you go in or is it happening whether you're conscious of it or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think we both approach movies the same way, where yeah. we don't want to bring too much to them, but we want to let them speak to us first. Right. And so I like that my experience was this way, and by no means am I saying this is a toolkit you got to bring yeah. into your movie-going experience now. It's maybe something to think about as you're watching movies as a possibility. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. Th this is sort of expanding what they can be. Yep. Obviously, it's going beyond the scope of, in many cases, what the filmmaker intended. Yeah. The majority of the films I write about in the book are, I guess you would say, secular films. They're not religious in theme or content. Right. So right there, you're already allowing that possibility right. to be there. And so I, I think, I hope I'm not putting words in your mouth, but that's no. sort of how you approach film too, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that the posture going in matters, um, but that doesn't mean you have to bring something to it in the sense that I, you're going to make it into something it's not. It, I, what I have seen as being important for myself is having that openness and starting to, to get rid of some of those lines um, of saying, uh, you know, movies are prayer. Like, that's an expansive idea for movies, right? A lot of people don't think about movies that way. And so what I like about your title is that it sort of provokes that I need to think about this more broadly. I mm -hmm. should walk into the theater when I flick on Netflix. I should be open mm -hmm. to, the ver to the breadth of an experience that I could have here rather than... I mean, I like any title that doesn't just say movies are entertainment. If we can just get that out of there, because that seems to be where it generally ends, right? Yeah, yeah, that, and, and they are. Like, that's Absolutely. at the, the very first paragraph, I think, I acknowledge, like, they can be that. They can yep. be historical artifacts. Yep. 
certainly their business ventures, yep. um, and those are all true, but let's also open up this facet mm -hmm. as well. And I think, you know, while doing that without forcing it upon the movie is also, I like that you use the word posture. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, it allows that movie to offer something to us and we're gonna say, okay, based on what I've been given now, how does that move me? Or how might yeah. I be able to respond? And there's maybe where we bring our, our worldviews, our sensibilities, our aesthetic yep. preferences. Yep. That's where the conversation can then start. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I think we start talking before the movie's done talking. Yeah. And uh, that can then be pro problematic. That's where then we're maybe forcing this idea, like I'm gonna make every movie I see now be a prayer of some right. sort. Right. And that's just not gonna work. So um, talk a little bit more about this, this, like you said, a lot of filmmakers, uh, even the films you talk about in the book, if you said to them, I see your movie as a prayer, they might be open to that, but that's, they would certainly be like, well, that's not how right. I thought about it. How much do you think that the artist's intent or purpose, like where does that come into play or not at all? I think it's an option. As yeah. we've been talking about, it's an avenue for approaching film. I certainly participate in you know, what would be called auteurist criticism, yeah. where you look at a director as the author and say, okay, this latest movie bears the same stamps as all their other movies. Here are the themes this person returns to, the techniques mm -hmm. they use. Totally valid. I do that a lot. It's, it's an enjoyable way to engage with film. But I also like to throw the author out the window at some point, yeah. too. I think that's maybe easier to do. I, I don't know. Do you think it's easier to do with movies because they're so communal in their creation? I, I feel like you have, even the smallest indie production has often, like, dozens and maybe a hundred yeah. hands on it. Creative hands, people. Sure. And when that's released, yeah. even if it's a very singular vision from one person's script, yeah. it's become something of its own. And so I like the freedom that that reality allows. Or am I pushing it too far there to say a movie becomes its own thing once it's out of their hands? You know, it seems when you talk, when I hear filmmakers talk, and, and artists in a lot of other mediums, when people come to them and say, you know, what did you? What does it mean? Or they want, you know, people are wanting them to basically describe what they're supposed to take yeah. from it, what that experience was supposed to be for them. Most artists really recoil from that question, right? They because they were trying to create an experience more than a just a a message. Um, not that some people don't use the medium of film to deliver a very sure. particular message. But those, those are probably more rightly called propaganda films, yeah. you know, uh, over a, a variety of topics. Um, I think when most filmmakers as artists said, I was trying to create an experience. And uh, there, are a, there are numerous ways to, you know, your experience of that is going to vary across how, what your own story is, what the story of kind of the collective stories, the community you live in, sure. how that overlaps with the film. So I... I don't think it, I actually think many filmmakers want to be mm -hmm. sort of thrown out. Yeah, you know, right. like, to a degree. Yeah, to a degree, saying they, had, they wanted to create a very particular experience, but what that experience generates for you is something that they want to be open-ended. And we've heard that, so you and I have gone to a couple film festivals yep. together, Toronto and Sundance, and sometimes I want to duck out yeah. for the filmmaker Q&A afterwards yeah. for exactly what you're talking right. about. Is, the, the the movies I respond to the most, often the filmmaker will say just what you said. is yeah. Well, it's up to you yeah. to a degree, you know? Yeah. They'll answer specific questions about choices and technique, but as far as what it means, yeah. yeah. But then you will get the filmmakers who are yeah. like, oh, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, right. And, and then we get, you know, the worst version of that film <laughs> I know. in their right. answer. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's definitely room for that. I think key to respecting the art is that we ground our response in what's on the screen though mm -hmm. and that's where filmmakers rightly recoil when we're bringing our issues mm -hmm. and dumping them on this movie uh, and when you look at what's actually been shown on the screen there's really no correlation so yeah. as long as we're as long as we're responding to you know things from the cinematography or the editing style or mm -hmm. the performance choices as long as we're responding to what they've given us, then mm -hmm. it becomes a dialogue. So yeah. that's that's something to be a little careful of when you when you want to throw the filmmaker's intent out. Yeah, absolutely. And so in my experience, 
um, giving sermons, preaching in churches. It, it always blew me away how someone would be able to, someone would come up to me afterwards and say, oh, you know, you were talking about this and this and saying something. And what they're relaying to me, I, I never, I know, I never said you that. No like, it was just so that, yeah. different than what I was actually talking about. Um, and they interpreted that in very particular ways. And I, you know, I realized how, boy, you, I said something mm -hmm. that got you going over here, and now you have projected all of these mm -hmm. things on it. And in, that happens with all kinds of things. So that was an experience, and, and films are experiences. I, I agree, I just think we have, to, we have to sort through and become aware of like, what is, what's going on in me? Right. You know, yeah. We talked about when we were uh, at festivals before, the idea of stopping asking the question whether or not I like the film and ask the question, does the film like me? Like, how does it read me? That's a much more interesting yeah. question. Um, and I think that, you know, that, that's part of what you're getting at here with, with your book. So l let me ask you this. So on one end, you've got, you and I both work in, uh, and lived in, in different spheres at different times. So you write for Think Christian, which has a very particular audience. You also do film spotting, which is, there's overlap in those audiences for sure. But one, you're really, you're coming at a film from a particular angle and the other one from another angle. So in your dealing and interactions with people inside of the Christian faith and then people outside of that, who's more open to this expansive way of hmm. thinking about movies? What, what are the, what's that like? Who, you know, inside of you know, the, the Christian world, are, do you feel people are open to this expanding their understanding of what movies are and how that relates to prayer? Or are people outside interested in this conversation of, oh, wait a minute, this could have some spiritual import right. for me? Yeah, it's been overall surprising positively both ways, I would say. I've been more surprised with the positive reception from, say, secular media mm -hmm. or film critic colleagues who don't have a religious background or a faith background. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess I didn't necessarily anticipate it would go badly. I just yeah. didn't know, right? Because I, my previous, the first decade or so of my career was in mainstream media for a local yeah. suburban daily newspaper as a movie critic. So that's kind of where my background was. Yeah. And when I moved to Think Christian in 2011, it was kind of a, a significant shift because here I was going to be writing explicitly about culture in general, but film particularly from a Christian perspective. Mm -hmm. And I did wonder, okay, is this closing the door mm. on having that other opportunity? Sure. And oddly enough, I joined Film Spotting a year after taking the Think Christian job. So mm. it was almost within a year, um, I again had this opportunity to have a foot in both places. Yeah. And then the question became, well, what are Film Spotting listeners gonna think when they find out what the day job is? Similarly, what are Think Christian readers going to think when they listen to Film Spotting? And we may not touch on spiritual issues at all because right. the audience there is a mainstream audience. For me, that's the crucial element is who is the audience. And I think if you're true to the audience who is listening or watching or reading or whatever to what they're looking for while being true to yourself, then things will go fine, and they largely have for me. Mm -hmm. Sure, there were some film spotting listeners early on who would say, oh, is this guy only gonna talk about faith-based films now? Sure. And similarly, there is still resistance in the Christian art community towards engaging with films so broadly. So mm -hmm. there's been some of that, but overall, um, I think there's been an encouraging openness, mm -hmm. and uh, there have been, you know, some of the blurbs that I got for the book came from critics and others in media who are not from a religious background, but said this was an interesting way for me to think about movies that's different. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's not any different than for, like I read film criticism from particular political bents just because yeah. it may not be mine, but it's interesting to see how someone else sees films. Yeah. So maybe there's an element of that at play. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, to, to understand it, again, we get so locked in our own experience of something, especially when it's art, there, it, so subjective I, I just you know and again it's why I've I have gone to film festivals for years and taken as many people with me as I can um, because I just think my own experience of it is not enough and and so I, I think it you know I've I've had a similar experience where 
there are a number of people who are just super intrigued, who are not a part of uh, a Christian faith community in any, any sense, but they're really intrigued by the intentionality with which uh, you know, we're coming to a film mm -hmm. or the, the posture that we're talking yeah. about. Um, I think it's probably not what they expect, yeah. right? There's an element of that where the loudest voices in terms of Christian engagement for the arts, certainly going back to the culture wars and forward, yeah. have been out of speaking out of fear and negativity, right? Yeah, so right. when they encounter a different posture, I think there's a surprise there. I, I don't know if you've sensed, so you've been doing with Into the Noise, you've been going to festivals how many years now? Uh, uh, almost 10. Almost 10, okay. So I feel like there's been a shift in that last time, and maybe it's just because I've had the chance to think Christian to engage more with these yeah. folks, but Christians who are interested in thinking about art and doing the work of thinking about it beyond the question, is it okay to think about it? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm speaking specifically for film. I yeah. feel like in the culture wars it was this, well, here's the safe films. Yep. Um, and that's kind of where the conversation ended. Then it moved to, well, no, all film is worthy of our engagement as mm -hmm. Christians, are taking seriously. Mm -hmm. And that was a good move. And it seems like in the last five, maybe 10 years, enough people have come around to that, mm -hmm. that now Christians are doing that engagement. Do, yeah. Have you seen that where it's kind of progressed to a little more, um, less arguing about whether it's okay? Yeah. And more to just, yeah, it is, so let's do it. Yeah, I, it seems to me that the, the spectrum of the way people are approaching it is, has grown significantly. Um, and, and I think there are still people along all that, that whole yeah, spectrum. that's true. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's encouraging to me to see that um, there's a growing number of people who are saying, or in some ways I think it, it's born out of trying to reconcile their experiences. Just you know, the yeah. way we started this conversation, how'd you come up with this book? Well, I realize the fact that I sit and I watch movies and the experience I'm having while I'm watching this film is the same experience I have in, you know, when I'm, I take this posture of prayer. Mm -hmm. So how do I, how do I reconcile yeah, that? Yeah, what's you going know? on there? Yeah, because to, to say that there's nothing going on there and I'm forced to throw that out would mean this doesn't, this doesn't, this isn't important. And I know it's important. Mm -hmm. You know, my, I watched that film and that was important to me. It was formative to me. So I think that there's a growing number of people who, who feel that way and, yeah. and, and, and say the experiences that I'm having around film are resonating and are as powerful and at times maybe even more powerful than any of the other spiritual practices that I have. And so there is, a, I think, a growing theology and a growing conversation around that. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that because it's, it's an important thing. I'm, I'm glad you said spiritual practices too because I like to think that what I experienced, what I ended up writing about can stand alongside those other spiritual practices rather, rather than replacing them. Yeah. You know, this isn't to say that you can find in movies exactly the same right. thing that you can find either in your personal prayer life or your liturgical prayer life. You know, absolutely yeah. we need all of those phases. Uh, this is more of an, an, a look at how those lines can blur yeah. and how movies can maybe walk alongside these other spiritual practices. Yeah, well, it's great. I, I appreciate you putting in the hard work that it is to uh, to get all the way from cover to cover when you're writing it. Given it, it's a it's a it's a great gift, uh, and I think it's a, a book that really does expand both our understanding of movies and prayer, which uh, is it's a helpful thing. So thanks for your work. Thank you. Yeah.